Hey there guys, what's up? Welcome back to What Cheers. I'm Nick as always. Tonight we are in store for probably what is gonna be a amazing beer review, or at least I hope so. I'm super excited about this one. This is from Hill Farmstead and it is their Madness and Solitude we're gonna be looking at. Um, first time they've ever done this beer, maybe the last time. Uh, basically what this beer is, it is their double IPA Ephraim. Uh, basically it's bordering on a triple IPA to be honest. It's a 10 half percent um, double slash triple IPA that they do very rarely. Um, and then they aged that beer in various uh, second and third use bourbon barrels. Um, so yeah, I don't think we've seen anything like that from Hill Farmstead before as far as aging an IPA in bourbon barrels. So this is gonna be very interesting to find out how this is. I've heard really great things. So, I mean, it is Hill Farmstead after all. Um, but yeah, guys, so they made this, uh, they brewed this in, in March of 2015, and then it says that it was aged in second and third use bourbon barrels, but I don't know how long it was aged for because it just got released like a couple of weeks ago at time of recording. So that's the only thing I don't know is how long it was aged for, but yeah, it's double dry hopped Oak Age Imperial IPA. Uh, this was a limit two per person, 750 milliliter only at the brewery. So I have to give a huge, huge thank you to my good friend, Kelsey, who went up to uh, Hill Farmstead and brought me back one of these bad boys to, to check out. Uh, just so happened that she was going up there for the weekend. So I'm super fortunate and lucky to get to try this. So thank you, Kelsey, you rock, um, really appreciate it. So as far as what Ephraim is uh, hopped with guys, it is uh, Centennial, Chinook, Columbus, Simcoe, and Warrior hops. Um, I actually reviewed this beer, or at least shot a review for the regular Ephraim back in the spring of 2014, which I never posted. But that beer was one of the most intense, craziest hop experiences I've ever had in my life. That was just over the top, but in like the best way possible. I think the theoretical IBUs on it was like 280 or like 300 IBUs, something like that. It was so, so, so intense and insane and crazy and I loved it. I should probably post that review now that I'm gonna be posting uh, this one of the bourbon barrel age version. But yeah, if you ever get a chance to try, if you ever, uh, if Sean ever puts on the regular Ephraim again, it's their craziest, wildest hobby beer by far. Uh, like I said, it's 10 and a half percent, so it's, it's crazy. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and crack into this. Um, this is just uh, about a week old at this point, a little over a week old from when it was filled. And uh, it's been out of the fridge now for um, about 45 minutes, but it's got a really good chill to it still. But uh, definitely this is a beer that you're gonna wanna let warm up or at least come up several degrees uh, closer to room temperature while you're drinking it. So yeah, guys, without further ado, let's check out what a bourbon barrel age, huge Imperial IPA tastes like from Hill Farmstead, Madness and Solitude. Let's get into this. Oh, oh my, it's coming right over the top there. That was really, really filled to the brim. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a small pour on this one because I'm gonna be sharing this with my dad uh, shortly when he comes over. So let's get uh, just a little taster here. Got the proper glass we're out. That should be good for the review. All right, guys, let's get a look at the appearance on the Madness and Solitude. I am so excited about this one. Such a unique, uh, just, yeah, just a really unique idea to do this kind of thing. I love it, uh, especially something from Hill Farmstead that's just like really outside the box. This is very, very cool. Um, yeah, guys, let's get a look at the appearance on this. Obviously, I didn't pour it too crazy because I didn't give myself a huge pour, but the head that is there is super tightly packed bubbles, uh, pretty much white. And uh, yeah, if we swirl this around, look at that beautiful lacing. Wow, that is incredible. Beautiful lacing, 10.5%. Yeah, that is just awesome stuff, guys. Um, it's gonna be amazing, I bet. Uh, as far as the color and the appearance, it is super, super opaque, hazy, burnt orange, dark golden, um, looks black towards the middle. Very, very dark, holding up to the bright light, as you would expect, it was aged in in bourbon barrels, so uh, pretty awesome. Away from the light, guys, it looks beautiful. Beautiful, like deep, dark, hazy, burnt orange color to it, uh, like honey color. Just looks really thick and uh, awesome. So let's go ahead and get an aroma on the Madness and Solitude. Oh my God, wow. Oh, 
This thing is insane. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Did somebody just like straight up pour a shot of bourbon into my beer? Like this is, this is so bourbon forward. Oh man, that's amazing. Vanilla, oak, that char kind of uh, aroma to it. Huge vanilla and oak, obviously. Um, I'm getting like a, a, that kind of almost like tart, um, like fruity ester kind of thing going on, which is I'm guessing partly from the bourbon um, and then definitely from the hops, kind of that aged hop aroma that you're getting. Yeah, it definitely smells like, you know, an aged, huge aged hoppy beer. Like you still get a lot of the hops. It's just that they smell a little bit um, aged, obviously. But that's that's basically what you're getting, that kind of fruity ester, fruity-ish kind of thing going on with the hops that are faded. Big sweetness from the bourbon, the vanilla, the oak, the caramel. Yeah, like big like caramel and toffee kind of notes. But still has a very vibrant, like bright, almost again, like sweet tart kind of fruity thing going on. Wow. And to be honest, I don't smell the 10.5%. I get like a little bit of almost like a warming as I breathe it in. Like this is so bourbon forward. I've never come close to having anything like this from Hill Farmstead before. This is so unique. I would not be able to tell you this is Hill Farmstead, judging by the aroma on this. Like you would have no idea what you were drinking. You can definitely tell it's a bourbon barrel aged choppy beer though. I can tell you that, like you know it's a bourbon barrel aged choppy beer. This is huge on the bourbon. All right guys, let's get a sip on this. Really excited. Thank you, Kelsey. You rock, cheers. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. That tastes even better than it smells. Holy shit, that's good. So complex. Wow, I don't even know where to begin with this beer. That is so complex. Wow, I love it. Right up front, right up front you get this amazing blast of hops. Um, really fruity, almost a little bit bready. Um, just a, just a classic like punch of what a amazing Hill Farmstead hoppy beer is up front at the tip of the tongue. As soon as it hits the mid palate, that's when like the bourbon, the barrel aging just takes over. Like this is a bourbon bomb. But because Ephraim itself is such a huge, huge hoppy beer, it's such a huge triple, I, tri, triple IPA basically, the, the beer really stands up well with that bourbon. Like they really mesh well together because they're taking two very, very strong things and putting them together. Um, so, you know, you have a lot of bourbon barrel aging going on, but you also have a huge, huge double IPA that stands up to that. So they actually balance each other out strangely for a 10 and a half percent beer. I mean, everything about this is huge, but it does have balance because it's two huge things uh, going together with each other. So it's really, really crazy stuff. Again, right up front, it's just like, the first few seconds is just taking a sip of like an amazing, juicy, huge Hill Farmstead hoppy beer. I mean, just huge on the flavor. Everything that you want, like pineapple, orange, uh, grapefruit, um, a little bit of like peach in there as well. It's really crazy stuff. And then again, mid palate, bourbon, 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 vanilla, oak, a little bit of that char, a little bit of caramel kind of sweetness to it as well. And then in the finish, the finish is, I'd say like higher side of low bitterness. Um, the beer definitely sticks around your mouth. It is a sticky beer. It is definitely gonna be mouth coating. It's definitely gonna leave a sort of like, almost like sticky residue in your mouth um, but after you swallow. I really don't get any warming in this beer. I don't even get like any hint of the 10 and percent in the flavor. And as I said, this is warmed up quite a bit, it's still got a good chill to it, but even as it's warmed up a bit, um, it the alcohol is really, really well hidden in this, guys. This beer is really soft on the palate as well. It's got sort of this like low carbonation thing going on, pretty soft and creamy. Um, it really gives you this like vibrant, like zesty tingling on the tongue after you swallow. 
it just opens up the taste buds. There's just so much flavor going on in this beer that your taste buds are just like popping open. Um, that that tart, like semi-tart, um, sweet kind of thing I got in the aroma, like that fruity ester thing I was talking about, definitely delivers on the palate. Um, I'm not even sure what it would be like. Maybe maybe something like a, like an apple or a pear or something like that. Um, that kind of fruitiness um, on the palate, but and maybe like a candied lemon type of thing or, or sugar coated lemon. But yeah, just pops open your taste buds. This is such a nice beer to drink, and I love how the more you drink it, the less kind of crazy you think it is. Like the first few sips. You're kind of taken aback. This is a huge beer. It's got a lot of bourbon notes to it. But the more you sip on it and it just layers up, you can get very comfortable drinking this beer at 10.5% because as I continue to sip it, I mean, I'm not thinking, oh, this is a crazy big beer anymore. I'm just thinking, wow, this is, you know, really nice stuff. Um, so th this is a beer that you want to definitely take your time with, sip on. Um, yeah, this is one of the more complex this has got to be the most complex hoppy beer I've ever had from Hill Farmstead now. I mean, you've just got the barrel aging going on, which is something I've never seen before. Um, so I'm really, really impressed by this. All right, guys, so I'm going to sip on this for just another few minutes, and I'll get back to you with my final thoughts and score on the Madness and Solitude. I've got just a little bit left. And uh, wow, yeah, this is just amazing stuff, guys. What a unique, really smart uh, move to do something this cool with this beer. So... All right, guys, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I'm back with the Madness and Solitude, and I've been sipping on it for a little while now. I poured a little bit more in the glass. Um, this is such an exceptional beer. It is so different from anything I've had from Hill Farmstead. I love that. It's very creative. It's very unique. Um, you know, to take such a huge beer like Ephraim and then Agent and Bourbon Barrels, uh, it's just like the perfect matchup. It really is. It's just two huge things going together, um, you know, the intense bourbon character with the intense, intense hoppiness of this beer uh, just go really well hand in hand together. So let's go ahead and get a aroma and flavor one more time, guys. Yeah, just amazing, like really smooth bourbon, vanilla, oak. Like that's what I'm getting, caramel. And then those fruity esters, those fruity hops kind of shining through in the in the background because they've obviously been aged for a while. Oh, I love the smell of this. I could literally smell this all night. It's just so like intoxicating. It's so cool. Anyways, guys, let's get another sip. Cheers. Wow, so fucking good. So sweet. It's just like a, a luscious beer. This is like a real, a real treat, a real sipper. Um, yeah, you definitely want to share this. I'm glad my dad's coming over so I get to share this with him. I would not want to drink a whole growler of this alone. Not because I wouldn't enjoy it, but because this is a huge ass beer and it has so much flavor. This is meant to be shared for sure, guys. Um, it's got those wonderful up front, just all those beautiful hops. Um, that beautiful, you know, Hill Farmstead, just clean, juicy, sweet, kind of big double IPA right up front. And then again, in the mid palate to finish that bourbon just sort of creeps in. It's so smooth, it just kind of takes over um, for a while. It's that vanilla, that oak, that caramel, that, that toffee, that kind of like bright fruity esters that'll kind of open up the taste buds a little bit. It's almost like sweet and tart. It's really awesome stuff. Yeah, and after you swallow, it just sort of coats the palate. It leaves you with a nice sweetness, a nice real aggressive hoppy kind of feeling on your tongue. Um, really not much bitterness to speak of. I got a little bit more before. I got. I don't get a whole ton for such huge beer. It's really like mellowed out the bitterness I'm sure by the barrel aging but just such an exceptional exceptional beer. Um, very dry in the finish but also like mouth coating at the same time. Um, very sticky for sure. So yeah, guys, this is a, you know, I didn't know what to expect going into this beer. Um, I mean, I had an idea, because obviously I knew it was Bourbon Barrel Age IPA, but uh, this is really, really unique stuff from Hill Farmstead, and I dig it. Uh, I hope they do something like this again. That would be really, really cool. Uh, it would have been fun to have uh, the regular Ephraim actually side by side with this to, uh, to taste them, you know, together, just to see, you know, to break it down and see the differences, but 
Uh, hopefully they'll do that beer again on its own. So as far as the score on this one, guys, it's really tough. You know, this just came out. There's not a lot of ratings on it. Uh, so obviously Beer Advocate doesn't have a uh, rating on it. But um, I'm going to have to go something pretty high on this. For uniqueness sake alone, I mean, this is like incredible. I think the more you drink this, it just, everything's so cohesive in this beer that you're not really taken aback by the barrel aging at all. You just sort of get used to it and it's just an incredible, incredibly enjoyable uh, drinking experience. So as far as the score guys, back to that, um, I think I'm gonna go 99 on this. I really, really like this. Um, yeah, let's go 99. I think that's really, really where I want it to be. It's an A plus beer, absolutely. Um, so unique, so different. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what else I would really change about it too much, but um, yeah, I'm gonna stick with the 99 guys. So please let me know if you have had the madness and solitude. At the time I'm posting this review, um, it is still available at the brewery. Um, so definitely go get your hands on it if you can or trade for it if you can. Um, it is one not to be missed. Just uh, a reminder, it is uh, 750 milliliter only, two per person limit. Uh, $15. So um, if you can get it, get it. Uh, I would highly recommend it. I hope it's still there by the time you see this video uh, so that you can try to get your hands on it from somebody you know, or maybe you can go up there yourself and get it. But uh, they made a very uh, a quiet uh, release. I mean, there was nothing really announced about it. They just went on tap at the brewery, which I kind of thought was awesome. It wasn't like a big uh, hyped release or anything like that. So Definitely let me know if you've had the madness and solitude. And if you didn't and you can't get it, well, I hope you enjoyed this review, guys. A very, very, very unique uh, beer from, from Sean Hill and uh, very, very well done. I'm very impressed and I'm looking forward to seeing if he does anything like this in the future. Um, even different barrel aging with uh, hoppy beers would be really cool. So yeah, 99 for the madness and solitude for me, guys. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Kelsey again for hooking me up with this super special beer. Uh, obviously wouldn't be able to do it without you. So until next time, guys, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next beer review. Cheers, thanks.